Welcome to Dar Headlines, I'm Wendy Chen, thank you for joining us. Coming up in today's headlines, 200 refugee children from the UNHCR City Education Center are taking a field trip to the local science center. Continuing on our future report on education systems, we go to Finland to find out why their education program is on top of the world. And in Taiwan's Kaohsiung, we visit the once famous Chinese herb tea street and learn the history behind the traditional medicine. First up in today's program, we join city volunteers in Malaysia as they take 200 refugee children of the UNHCR City Education Centre on a trip to the National Science Centre. The day was a special treat for the children who have been refugees, like ID cards and thus are restricted in their movement. As well, since most come from poor families, many of these children really have a chance to engage in activities that take them beyond their doorsteps. In our next report, we take a look at both the joy and wisdom of this trip has brought for these children. Today, the Tsuji Kuala Lumpur chapter and the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees have joined hands to bring this group of 200 refugee children to Malaysia's National Science Center for a visit. Today's activity is being sponsored by Tsuji and the United Nations, and we are taking these refugee students on a field trip. The yearly field trip is an activity that is eagerly looked forward to by these refugee children. Uh, actually, these children, they really don't have proper way to go out from their house because they are refugees. They don't have any identity card with them, so that they, they are not allowed to simply go out and then walk around here and there. So we, we feel like so sympathy so that we brought them out like this kind of vacation. I am very happy. I would love to live here. The first time I saw the dinosaur, it looked so mean and frightening. I was a bit scared. Oh, wow. During the day, volunteers also take an opportunity to teach the children about recycling. Before, I didn't really know what to do, but now I'm more familiar with the process of recycling. For example, plastics, tin, clothing, boxes, clothes, and glass. I will take these recyclables and put them in a plastic bag and then give them to volunteers to recycle. On this special field trip, these refugee children are not only given the rare chance to enjoy themselves, but also a time to learn how to safeguard the earth and its resources. Also in Malaysia, we meet 18-year-old Hanif, an Arakanese Muslim refugee who fled from Myanmar to Malaysia. To care for his ailing parents and younger siblings, he began scavenging nine years ago. In 2008, at the UNHCR City Education Centre, Hanif began to learn the basics of English and Malay as the first step to creating a better life for him and his family. <laughs> To Hanif, who scavenges for a living, these garbage are all treasures. Today, Hanif has come to Tsuji Central Recycling Station, not to sell recyclables, but to join the outdoor learning activities with his classmates. There are all kinds of recyclables here. It's very interesting. 18-year-old Hanif is an Arakanese Muslim refugee who fled from Burma to Malaysia. Nine years ago, he began scavenging to support his ill parents and siblings. Before, I sold these recyclables without separating them into categories. Now I know how to set the prices. Established in 2008, the UN High Commissioner for Refugee, Siji Education Center, not only assists Burmese refugee children in learning English and Malay, it also teaches them etiquettes and social skills. Nif is a good student. We have watched him change and learn to respect others. This year, he went to help University College in Kuala Lumpur to further his studies. He's never missed a class. Hanif knows that education offers an opportunity to change one's fortunes. 
Saya dapat kurang duit. Saya nak cari. I only make a little money selling scrap metal. I like to earn a better living. I want to learn to repair cars or study computer technology to improve my family's standard of living. Kehidupan kami. Kita lihat apa yang Suci buat. Yeah, they believe that center, yeah, membantu pada yang. Suci Education Center was founded to help the needy as a way to open new horizons. They not only learn to help themselves, but also learn to help other poor families. I hope that Anif can one day become a leader of his people. Dapat jadi leader untuk. With a hopeful future and a heart full of gratitude, Hanif is determined to build a better life. Next, in the United States, the American Red Cross of Greater Los Angeles Region recently held their committee leadership training seminar at the U.S. TG headquarters in St. Dimas, California. During the seminar, TG volunteers not only gained new knowledge on disaster management, but also seized the opportunity to introduce TG's environmental concepts to Red Cross. The Red Cross volunteers said they were all very touched by TG's humanitarian spirit. Over the weekend, the American Red Cross of Greater Los Angeles Region held their committee leadership training seminar at the USA CG headquarters in San Dimas, California. The reason behind the success of their organization is the well-organized volunteer training programs. I know that I've been here for many, many years, have to take these classes because there is a change in the national direction, trying to keep everybody down the same path, the same road, so we all can act the same way no matter where we are. Or if we Since there are many different differences in culture and regulations between Taiwan and the United States, Suji volunteers take the opportunity to absorb knowledge from the Red Cross. Many of our volunteers have already gone through their professional training program and brought the knowledge back to our own training seminars. The purpose of the training seminar held by Red Cross is to ensure that when a disaster strikes, there is only a system to follow. The Red Cross not only provides volunteer training programs, but also online resources. When a disaster happens in the United States, we will be informed right away. The Red Cross has invested a lot of their money in their online media. For example, on their website, you can tell how many people they mobilized when a disaster happens and where the refuges are located. It will also tell you what kind of people they need in the disaster area. During the Red Cross Committee Leadership Seminar, city volunteers also use this time to promote city's mission of environmental conservation. This is a green campus and so there have three different components to recycling. One is um, um, we've learned a lot. Um, we've learned how a lot of our volunteers have learned about your recycling program, how to leave a zero carbon footprint, um, and also the cultural differences as well. Uh, it has opened up many eyes uh, amongst ourselves. Now with a better understanding of each other, when a disaster strikes, the Red Cross and Tsuji promise to work hand in hand and help those in greater need. One education system's emphasis on road memorization and standardized tests does not help those students who lack the ability to keep up. In part two of our education reform report, we take a look at how Finland's education program has made a name of itself in the world. With emphasis on fueling self-learning, class discussions and doing away with standardized testing. In schools, teachers have the ability to personalize coursework and report cards according to students learning ability. We take a look at first-hand experience of student exchange par participant Chen Senyuan. At 7 in the morning, this is National Zhengzhi University in Taipei City, Taiwan. Students are heading to their first class of the day. The ability to pick out your own schedule for most Taiwanese students happens only when they reach university level of education. Chen Shenyuan has studied Turkish for less than a year, but conversing directly with his Turkish teacher in class isn't a new challenge for him. When Chen was in his first year of high school, he left for northern Finland for a student exchange program. 
What he found most shocking when he arrived wasn't the language barrier, but the teaching methods. Students have a lot of discussion time in class. Teachers won't just lecture at the front of the classroom, while students only listen and take notes. Chen's favorite class is English. After arriving in Finland, he thought perhaps he would have an easy time in English class, but it didn't turn out that way. The teacher will give a topic and students will break off into group discussions. Everyone will get to talk about their experiences. At the end, we will summarize everyone's opinions and thoughts. During class, there is a lot of room for exploration. Structuring classes to encourage students to think for themselves, although seems simple in theory, in practice is not so easy. However, in Finland, it's simply how it's done. Finland is a very small country and we cannot afford not to educate our population well because the population is the, the resource. We don't have very many natural resources or richnesses, so the people are the richness that we have. From when students enroll in school, Finnish teachers try to listen the learning gaps between students. If they find that a student is struggling, they will give that student specialized attention and tutoring. I think they have done well with the idea of joy in learning. When a child finds the joy in learning and has a goal in mind, they will seek to learn more. Enrolling a child in school at the age of seven seems late compared to other countries, but Finland's education program's success is evident and is attracting the attention of the world. Finnish schools let their children find their own way of learning. It's a self-motivated type of learning, not a forced learning. While this education structure looks careless in the beginning, in the end, students have their own educational goals and are studying for themselves. Starting in elementary school, teachers take the time to make sure all the students are on the same level. Teachers will adjust classroom coursework according to how students absorb materials. It might be shocking to hear, but in Finland, there is no standardized testing. We try to um, maximize the educational output and the learning outcomes of every individual according to their capabilities and abilities. So, uh, we don't believe uh, in competition between the students or pupils. We believe in competition within the pupils so they compete with themselves. Focusing on establishing a firm basic foundation of learning, students are the country's richest resources, making the tiny country of Finland a model of excellence in education for the rest of the world. The life story of Tsuji volunteer Wei Xingjun and her family was turned into a die drama series. On June 23rd, Wei Xingjun's mother passed away. After Mrs. Wei's death, the family chanted Buddhist scriptures for over eight hours and decided not to hold any memorial service. On the seventh day after her death, the family stayed at home chanting the sutra while their father volunteered at the local recycling station. The children said they hoped to repay their mother by cherishing their bodies and help those in greater need. Sitting in the living room, this is the Wei family. Today is the seventh day after Tsuji volunteer Wei Liang Xu's mother passed away. In their living room, there is no memorial tablet but only the chanting of sutras. When a person passes away, the most important thing are their thoughts. I think after reciting Ami Tuofu for eight hours, the whole mourning process is done. I believe after eight hours, my mother's spirit is no longer with her body. She is in a better place now. I think rest of the process is unnecessary. On June 23rd, Mrs. Wei, who has been bedridden for over 20 years, passed away. Instead of having a memorial service, her children decided to recite Ami Tofu for her. To repay the grace of their mother, the children vowed to do things that will benefit all sentient beings. My family and I didn't hold a memorial service for my mother because we think it is unnecessary. The master told us that we need to cherish our bodies and encourage more people to walk on the city path. 
On the first seven days after Mrs. Wei's death, her husband decided to volunteer at the recycling station. He says he wants to send his blessing to his wife by volunteering. In spite of the suffering that comes from the loss of their loved ones, this family promises to stay strong and continue to be filial towards their father. They believe this is the best way to repay the grace of their mother, who will be watching over them from the Pure Land. days when healthcare resources were insufficient and the luxury many couldn't afford, people depended on herbal drinks to help relieve and prevent diseases. Due to the popularity of these drinks, one was able to find a huge variety of herbal drinks all in one street in Kaohsiung. Though business is no longer as good as in the old days, the love for these traditional drinks remains. In our feature report on Taiwan's fading trade, we visit the famous Chinese herb street to learn more about the folk drink. In the early days when farmers got thirsty, apart from drinking water, they also drink this Chinese herb tea. For farmers, this Chinese herb tea helped prevent dehydration. However, to make a cup of tea like this is no easy task. Let's visit an herb tea store and take a look. On the side of the street, one can see bunches of Chinese herbs. And looking further, herb tea stores are everywhere. Situated right next to the 100-year-old Sanfeng Temple, this famous Chinese herb tea street in Kaohsiung attracted many suppliers to set up stores here for business in the 1950s. Those who pick the herbs, they usually go up to the mountain in the afternoon and bring it back to sell in front of the temple. They normally start at midnight or 4 to 5 a.m. At most, we had over 100 stores here, herbs that you can't find in the northern Taiwan or in Taidong. You can always find here in Kaohsiung. The market that once provided a large variety of Chinese herbs disappeared after the city went through urban planning, leaving behind only a few stores. However, the love for the traditional drink has already taken root in southern Taiwan. Though the tea-making master spent some 12 hours a day cooking the traditional tea, Seeing the satisfied smiles on the customers' faces makes all the hard work worthwhile. One grass jelly and one herb tea. With more than 60 years of history, this Chinese herb tea store is now passed on to the second generation owner. In the early days, they used teapots. We cooked the herb tea pot by pot. Back then, we had fewer plastic bottles, so we used rice wine bottles and asked our staff to clean them before we put the tea inside to sell. Back in the old days when medical resources are scarce and expensive, store owners even gave out small booklets with health tips of how Chinese herbs can be used in different ways to prevent certain diseases. Today, with fewer stores selling the traditional drink, store owners are often faced with a shortage of herbs. Sometimes, because of the weather, we will have a poor harvest of Chinese herbs and will end up with nothing to sell, so we will try to stock up. Though these stores stock up on a variety of Chinese herbs, they still are used by dates to ensure the quality of the traditional drink. Thus, to the tea-making masters, they have to be ready to face any challenges. 
In our last report, we learned about how Chinese herbs were used widely among people in the older generation to relieve symptoms of diseases. In the next report, we follow 65-year-old Huang Jingsi, a herb collector to the mountains, as he gathers these plants for his customers. With a decrease in the use of Chinese herbs, not only is the industry in decline, but these herb collectors are becoming more difficult to find, as it takes 10 to 20 years of training to be able to do Huang's job. Here's more. This is hidden between the stones. It looks like Japanese nut weed. In between the creepers, herb collector Huang Jingsi finds the roots of a Japanese knot weed. Going further into the mountain, 65 year old Huang next climbs up a hill to grab some Chinese knot weed. <laughs> Taking only the part he needs, Huang Jingzi buries the rest of the plant so that it will continue to grow. Working to safeguard the environment, despite seeing a large centipede which Huang could sell for a good price, he decides not to catch the insect. <laughs> Never worried about coming home empty handed. To these herb collectors, it is about respecting the nature. Thus, Huang only takes what he needs and tells the reporter of the prohibited things to do or say in the mountains. <laughs> Having collected these herbs for some 30 to 40 years, Huang Jingzi is like a living dictionary of plants. After a day's hard work, the senior resident drives his truckload of herbs to the herb tea store. Huang Fu Li, who is also a herb collector himself, shares stories of how his mother used these herbs to help others. That poor kid, it seemed like his life was about to come to an end. So my mom said, let's go take a look. After we came back, we felt sorry for the child. So we grounded some Chinese herbs, added brown sugar to make it sweet and fed it to him. In the old days, people relied on these traditional methods to recover from illnesses. But with advanced medical resources available nowadays, folk medicines like these herbs are not categorized as a part of Chinese medicine. When it has been processed, it's no longer Chinese herbs. It's hard to say because you have to preserve them and cut them into sections. As time goes by, these herb collectors and Chinese herb tea stores are slowly fading away. Nevertheless, what cannot be denied is that these herbs helped our older generation in times of illness and will always remain a fond memory to many. In 1996, Tijuana Elementary School was established in Mexico, which gave some 200 children from poor families a chance to study. Over the years, the number of students enrolling in the school is still increasing. At the school's graduation ceremony this year, city volunteers from the United States have arrived to give their blessings and encouragement. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye.